Welcome to another segment of ACRP TV, our spotlight today on making the most of your career journey. We're with Virginia Nido, who is the Global Head of Product Development Industry Collaborations in San Francisco with Genentech, which is a member of the Roche Group. And Virginia has been a great friend of ACRP for a long time, been a big help to me on articles and all sorts of things and speaking at our conferences. So Virginia, I want to thank you for giving us even more of your time this afternoon. Hi, Michael. So nice to be with you. Greetings from my dining room table in Northern California. I, li I like the artwork. You've got a nice setup there. It's very uh, yeah. inspiring. It's thought provoking. But, <laughs> I spend right, a start. lot of time here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, true. so true. All right, let's start off. Now, you and I have talked before, and we've known each other for a couple of years. Uh, uh, one of your things, you do not like the term career ladder. I think that's a good way to start this discussion. Why don't you like that term? What do you think it should be? Well, I've never really liked that term. Um, I don't think it's a good analogy for most of our careers. So the latter implies this like long, arduous climb that never seems to end and you're kind of staring up at somebody and somebody's nipping at your heels. So that one doesn't really work for me. Um, the jungle gym is better. I've heard that analogy because with the jungle gym, it's true. Uh, you go, you know, up sometimes, you can go across and sometimes you even fall off the jungle gym which is okay. But for me, Michael, the um, analogy that really works for me best is shoots and ladders. Do you remember that game? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, the board game and you spin the spinner. And if you land at the bottom of a ladder, you get to go up. But if you land at the top of a chute, you come down. And I think for a lot of us, you know, our career is sort of filled with these ups and downs. And what's important is how you react to the downs, the shoots, how you weather them, and sort of what tools are in your tool belt to get through those rough times. Now let's talk to about, you know, you, you, you've done a lot of speaking and writing about career. You're having a very successful career, but you're also very frank and very transparent about your own ups and downs and challenges you've had. So, you know, you talk about not liking the term career ladder so much, and it's obviously career path sounds nice, and it's not, but it's not always that linear. Uh, but talk about some of the things you've learned along the way. I don't want to say learn from your mistakes, but maybe that's a little bit of what it is in terms of uh, how to connect with mentors and network. And, and also, I'd like to talk about when and how to ask for help, because that's hard for some people to do. Right. That's right, Michael. So... I'll tell you that, you know, one of the things that's always kind of bothered me a bit is when I hear um, some leaders talk about their career path or their career journey, it sounds perfect. Like nothing bad has ever happened to this person or in their career, right? So it's like, oh, I went to graduate school and then I took this job and then I got a promotion and then I, you know, had international work experience and everything sounds like it just worked perfectly. And we know that's not the truth right? That's just not real. We all have these ups and downs. We have failures. We have missteps. And I want to talk about those because all of those experiences actually make up our career journey. And we learn from those rough times. So a few of the things that I've learned along the way, um, I think it's really important to know the difference between a mentor and a sponsor. So having a mentor is fantastic. A mentor is really anyone. It could be a, a person senior to you. It could be a person who's your peer. But you want a skill that they have, and you ask them to help you. So maybe, you know, I'm not so good with um, Excel, or I'm not so good with, you know, pr presenting. So I know someone who is, and I say, hey, can you help me for a defined period of time to get that skill? A sponsor is different. A sponsor is a more senior level person who is invested in a protege's success. A sponsor is a person who behind closed doors will advocate for you, give you the high profile assignments uh, and true hands-on skill building that can lead to promotions, that can lead to more challenging roles and, and a bigger salary, frankly. So having a mentor is great, but having a sponsor who you prove yourself to is even better. Interesting, and from those terms without, before you talked about it, I would have vaguely thought a mentor was more important. I know it's not an either or situation necessarily, 
but the, the value of the sponsor. So how, as, a, as an employee, say a mid-level employee or, or, or an entry-level person, how do you identify sponsors and mentors? Yeah, so I think, you know, sponsor is easier because, again, you can just ask someone. Um, I think it's important when you are asking for help from a mentor, have a defined goal. Right? So I've been asked to mentor folks. And, you know, if they come to me and say, Virginia, I want to learn this. And here are my questions. Here's why I would like you to help me. And we're going to do this for six months. I'm, I want to set up meetings with you once a week. And here's kind of the homework I'm going to give to you. Um, it has to be driven by the mentee, right? That's the mentee's goal is to get this skill. A sponsor is a little different. This is a longer term relationship. And frankly, it's a lot of work on the part of the protege. The protege really has to prove themselves to that sponsor so that the sponsor wants to be invested in that person's career. Now, sometimes this can be your direct manager. Oftentimes it's not. Oftentimes it's someone else within the organization with whom you already have a good relationship. You might go to that person and say, hey, these are my long-term career goals. I've seen you do this really successfully. Can you help me get there? And here's what I'm gonna do for you, right? This is not a one-way relationship. How can you help that person achieve their own goals? Interesting. All right, now I like, uh science fiction and alternate history and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to ask you a variation on that. If, if the you of, what would you say to the you of 20 years ago, beginning your career or early stage? More of than your, 20, Michael, but thanks. <laughs> you, were, you were nine years old at the time. So the nine year old year. Uh, what, what would you say in terms of career? What, what are one of the two, one or two biggest pieces of advice or warnings or encouragements you would give? Yeah, I would say, you know, be patient. Um, building a career takes a long time, right? And, and you have to just put in the work. You have to be um, steadfast. You know, I think showing up, um, don't discount that, right? I, um, you know, I, I was, I had two children who went through the daycare at Genentech. So it meant that every single day, Monday through Friday, you know, starting at 8 a.m. or earlier, because we're West Coast, I was there you know, for an extended period of time. And I was fortunate that I was really able to focus. Um, but I would tell myself from 20 years ago, you know, just, I guess another point is, you don't have to know what you want to do. Okay, like, I still don't really know what I want to be when I grow up. You know, you, you can't, I often hear people say like, you know, just find your passion and focus on that one thing. Well, what if you don't quite know? I think it's, fine. My career's just been all over the place, and yet it's been fun. I've learned a ton. I've had the opportunity to work with amazing scientists and researchers, and I think if you, if you explore different options and put your passion into each of those areas, you will ultimately be very, very successful and have a lot of fun along the way. That's something I wish I had known 20 years ago. That's good advice. All right, we've been here speaking with Virginia Nido. She's the global head of product development industry collaborations in San Francisco for Genentech. This has been ACR TV and our spotlight on making the most of your career journey. Virginia, I want to thank you again for joining us. Thanks, Michael. Thanks for the opportunity. It was great to talk with you.